Hello everyone, it's Cicel and Burst. So I'm going to be doing a review today, but before I get into the review, I just wanted to make a general announcement that I'm taking a hiatus in December. Other than pre-scheduled videos and Kwanzaa Reflectathon, I don't see myself posting during December. I'm just going to be taking a break. Probably won't be on book Twitter either. So I just want to give you a heads up. I will be just taking the time to really relax and decompress. So now that that's out of the way, the main topic of today's video is that I'm going to be reviewing Road to Woo Poop and Other Stories by Eugene Bacon. I received an advanced readers copy of this book from Meerkat Press in exchange for a fair and honest review. Thank you to Meerkat Press and all opinions are my own. So first I was going to give a general overview of the short story anthology, get into the overall themes and then like my favorite stories. I really like short story anthologies as almost like a behind the scenes kind of thing. Like I like seeing how it relates to the author's other works, like with N.K. Jemisin's How Long's the Black Future Month, a lot of the stories in there served as a springboard for her novels that she's written, and in this anthology I definitely saw some themes and like stylistic things that I recognized from when I'd read Claiming Timo, and I saw some like like genre things that look like they'll be appearing in her other work, like um, Ivory's story, just like a sci-fi crime mystery. And so I think that like single author short story anthologies can be very enriching and interesting to read in that way. So in terms of just like giving context for this anthology, Eugene Bacon is an African Australian author. And from what I know, she incorporates facets of life in Australia into her work. Eugene Bacon's style is generally described as literary. There are supernatural elements, there are extraterrestrial elements, science fiction, fantasy, horror, all of that, but there's not a whole lot of explanation of the supernatural elements or the extraterrestrial elements that show up. Like, they're there and they do influence the story, but the focus is more so on, like, the character's inner growth and their reactions to things. I enjoy Beijing Bacon's writing style. Our descriptions are nice, especially of the food. She has a really nice attention to texture and color. In general, I feel that the tone of Eugene Bacon's writing is kind of emotionally detached. I feel like I'm kind of watching things happen at a distance. But I think that she does like the shocking and disturbing and sort of like when she needs to grab you in and like give that emotional immediacy, she can do that very well too. So overall, I think that people who are veteran short story readers are going to enjoy this anthology. I feel like this is an anthology that is very well written. It's also challenging to read and like feels meaningful. This is something where I feel like I need to reread several of these stories before I can really talk on what is going on thematically in them. I feel like this is also good for readers who like complicated stories and who are okay with things not feeling neatly wrapped up. As I mentioned earlier, it's sort of Bacon's style to not really explain a lot of the extraterrestrial or supernatural elements that are going on. So you kind of have to come into these stories just accepting that you're not going to understand everything that you might want to understand and like you're just going to have to roll with it. But for people who are looking for like a more challenging reading experience who do enjoy the short story format, I think this is definitely going to have something for you to chew on, for you to think about. So in terms of general themes of the anthology, the titular story is Road to Whoop Whoop. And I thought that Whoop Whoop was an actual place, which it is, but it's also Aussie slang for just middle of nowhere, like the sticks. I noticed the phrase Whoop Whoop frames out the collection. Like we start off with the story Road to Whoop Whoop. And then the last story also uses the phrase Whoop Whoop in it. And I was thinking about that and like why Bacon chose to lay out her stories that way. What is it about this concept that the anthology needed to be named after it? And I think that there's something about that atmosphere of driving in the middle of nowhere that is kind of akin to reading this anthology. 
like when I think of like just kind of driving out through the country and it's like no one there or like just driving through like a highway just through like the middle of the woods I think of like the atmosphere like a sense of quiet that's both soothing and unsettling and the bizarre things that you kind of come across like on these little nowhere pit stops or like just on the side of the road because people don't come by very often and I feel like that does really sum up this anthology this feeling of quiet and sort of like inner focus and also like attention and a strangeness that you have to reconcile with and there are some sort of motifs that come up throughout. So animals are important to the anthology and their symbolism. There are people with animal spirits. There are people who are looking at the Chinese zodiac and using animals in that way to understand themselves and their relationships to others. Death comes up a lot. The idea of misconnections, like relationships that used to be really solid but have now gone sour. Attempts to get to know people that just kind of don't pan out or are sort of in an in-between space where you don't know if they'll pan out. Uh, time slips and time and reality are something that is also discussed. That said, so I'm just going to talk about the stories I really enjoyed, the ones that I was still thinking about when I closed the anthology. So in no particular order, the first one is Beadut. This was a fairy tale homage about a mermaid and a toad with memory loss who are stranded together. I really do enjoy allusions to folk tales and fairy tales, which this has, and it also feels separate from that. It kind of incorporates fairy tale logic, but in Bacon's style. And I don't quite understand what it means that the mermaid and the toad have the origin stories that they do, but there was something very poetic and unfair about the ending that really made me stop and think. The next one is Snow Metal. This is a sci-fi story about a man who takes a woman on a date. This is one where we're just kind of thrown into this complex world and just have to pick things up as Bacon tells you about them. I think it was that moment towards the end where we get into the deeply disturbing. That is what drew me to the story. I read it a few times because the thing that was really squicking me out it wasn't something I was used to reading about. It was something kind of like beyond my comprehension. And so it was wild how something that is just not something that I understand also felt so malevolent and felt so invasive. And then there's Magi Magi Chronicles, which I had read already. It was in the Dominion anthology that I reviewed. And this is set in a world where uh, magicians have intervened in the colonization of Africa. There was one kingdom in particular that had asked them for help in rebuffing colonizers and the magicians agree to help them. And I feel like that premise doesn't quite do the story justice, but I also don't think I can tell you much more than that. I think there are ways that you could like hear that premise and feel like the story is gonna be very simple. And at first it seems like it's gonna be very simple, but it's actually not. And the ending felt surprisingly tragic to me. Another one that stood out to me was Dying. This is a story about a man who dies and is reborn repeatedly over a very small interval of time, like within the same day. And when he's reborn, his day basically resets and no one remembers him dying except for him. And this was one that was like just morbidly funny. It was very stressful to read as the main character is trying to figure out like what's going on with him and trying to figure out how to stop what's happening. And also when it's re finally revealed like why all this was going on, it is just so senseless. And so I think like that tension between like the panic that this is inducing in this man's life and like the lack of reason and the lack of logic for any of it made this story stand out to me. And the next story that uh, stood out to me was the mini conception, articulation, and subsequent development. This is set, I would call it like steampunk England but it is like way too advanced to be steampunk like they have like I think it was time travel basically and it's about this social scientist who's locked in this like intellectual competition with another social scientist. Parts of it were just funny like there's a part where the protagonist sees some lady's ankles and he just like stops and for like three paragraphs is like them ankles though like 
how she is walking out the house so scandalously underdressed with these ankles all exposed. Like, how am I supposed to go out my day with these ankles just looking at me? <laughs> and, like, I know it's just, like, a thing in old-timey England with, with the ankles. and But, like, whenever, like, authors bring that up, it always makes me laugh. And he just kept referring to them as, like, the creamiest of ankles. And I was like, okay, bud. <laughs> Calm down now. This was another one that was disturbing. There are some reveals in there about the nature of the research that's going on that like complicates my understanding of like where this story is actually taking place and who these scientists actually are. And I honestly think it could be a commentary on colonization and England's experimentation on people who were seen as less than human. And at the end, it is just very trippy. Like you don't know what's real and you don't know who to trust. And then the last one is a nursery rhyme. So this is a sci-fi story about a woman whose husband has committed suicide and now she's raising their daughter on her own. This one was terrifying in that there's really only one way for this story to end and it felt like no one was interested <laughs> in doing anything to stop it from ending the way that it did. There's a nursery rhyme as the story is titled that shows up throughout and like increasingly creepy ways. And I think the other horror element in this story is what is revealed about the woman who's the main character about her life and like the things that she's been experiencing and why she's been experiencing them. And it just kind of made me think of My Soul to Keep by Tanana Reef Du because I just finished reading that for a live show with Ashley of Bookish Realm, Priya the Locked Booktician, and Erica of the Broken Spine. And I think there's a lot of parallels in terms of like how the story made me feel. So that was my review of this anthology. It is going to be out on December 1st. I will include a link in the description box to Meerkat Press, for those who are interested in checking it out. What do you think of the review? Do you think you'll be checking this out? What has your experience with literary science fiction been like? And I guess how much do you like to be challenged when you're reading something? Do you like to read to flex your intellectual muscles or is reading sort of a, more of a downtime of what we know. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. Goodbye.